at this point, is that right? Yes. What occurred next, Susan, if you recall? I was just laying there and I kept trying to talk to him and asking him to let me go and uh, not to hurt me and just talking and he wouldn't let me up. He just kept the knife in my stomach and told me to stay there because somebody might see me. You were still prone, so to speak, in the back seat. Is that correct? Yes. Did he ever let you up when we got out and it was just kind of fields and stuff he let me up? Now, the first time you got a chance to look out the window, it was fields. Is that right? Yes. How long would you estimate, if you can, from the time you recovered consciousness was that? Do you know? I don't know. Now, were you still talking to the defendant then when he let you up? Yes. What were you discussing at that point? I was just babbling. Once I got hysterical and, and then he pushed the knife tighter so I thought he would probably kill me then. So I just talked and kept asking him what he wanted and why he was doing this. But what do you mean? You got hysterical. I started crying and then he just pushed the knife tighter to me. So I stopped and I kept asking him why he was doing this and what he wanted and what for. You mean he pushed the knife further at your stomach? When I started crying, he did, so I stopped. But where was his hand during this period? He just had the knife in my stomach. So he continued to maintain the knife at that point. Is that it? Yes. You said you stopped being hysterical or tried to stop being hysterical. Yes. What did you do at that point, Susan? I just sat there and talked. Did he ever ask you anything further about your money? He asked me if I had any. How much? And I just said I didn't have that much. Did he request your money? Yes, he asked me for it. Did you give it to him? Yes. Where was the knife when you gave him the money? In my stomach. Why did you give him the money, Susan? Because I thought he would probably kill me if I didn't. Now, the car was still moving. You were still driving at this point, Susan? Yes. What occurred after that? He drove into, it was like gravel, and uh, there was rubber things to stop people from going through, and he just ran over them. And it was an apartment that was under construction. Some kind of construction site then? Yes. And did he stop the car? He pulled into one of the carports. He backed into it. Was this location where you were, was that hidden from view of the road? Yes. And what did he say, if anything, or do at that point? At first, he just pulled in, and he just stopped and sat there, and I kept asking him what he wanted, and he just sat there, and then he told me he hadn't had a woman in five years, and he wanted to make love to me, and I kept asking him, you know, if he didn't have a girlfriend or something, how would he feel if this happened to her, and I told him that I had a boyfriend, and I begged him not to do it. What did he say, if anything? He said it was one way or the other, dead or alive. Dead or alive? Yes. But where was the knife when he said that, Susan? It was in my stomach. Now, you were still sitting on the passenger side of the vehicle? Yes. What occurred at that point, Susan? Then he undressed and I sat there. He took his clothes off then? Yes. Completely? Yes. Did he make any movement toward you at that point? Yes. What did he do? He took off my top. By your top. You mean your blouse? Yes. What else? And then he just started making love to me. Did you have undergarments on at that point, Susan? Yes. Did he remove them? Yes. Would you like to take a short recess? Yes. And compose yourself? Yes. We will take a short recess, five or ten minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, please bear in mind that it is your duty not to converse with or suffer yourselves to be addressed by any person on any subject of the trial or to form or express any opinion thereon until the matter is finally submitted to you. We will take a short recess. The jury, the defendant, his attorney, and the district attorney are all present. Shall we proceed? Susan, at any time throughout this period, did the defendant give you any name? Did he give you his name? He said his name was Eddie. When did he do that? At the very beginning when I introduced myself and he said his name was Eddie. 184 words, five minutes. Starts with a question by plaintiff's attorney. <clears throat> yes.
You know what an intoxicated person looks like, don't you, Susan? A drunk person? Yes. Did you think the defendant was drunk? No. In his physical actions, I mean talking or walking or whatever you saw, did he appear unusual to you that night? Just nervous. Now, that phone conversation that you had at work on the 18th, was anyone else in the office at that time? Yes, my boss, Mr. Van White. Now, Mr. Van White, where was he when you received that phone call? He was standing in my office and I pointed to the phone and gestured that it was him. He went up and picked up the other phone. So he listened in on the same conversation? Yes. Did the defendant tell you where he was calling from? From jail. Did he mention anything else in the conversation, Susan? He just said that he would do anything. He would pay me any amount of money if I would just commit him and he would be under any care because he didn't want to go to prison anymore. Approximately what time of day was that conversation, Susan, do you recall? It was around one or so. Did you receive any other phone calls? Yes. Approximately what time was that? It was a little after two. And again, it was the defendant? Yes. Did he give you his name again? Yes. And what did he say this time? He just said the same thing. And he just begged me not to press charges and he would do anything. He just said he was sick and he didn't know what he was doing. Did you report these conversations to the police? I called Sergeant Hodgkin and I told him to have him stop calling. And then he said that he would call the jailer and not let him, him have any more phone calls and that he wanted to talk to me. So I agreed with Sergeant Hodgkin to go down to the jail. Did you go down to the jail? Yes. Now, do you say the defendant told you over the phone he wanted to talk to you? Yes. And did you go down to the jail and see Sergeant Hodgkin? Yes. Who was in the room when you saw Sergeant Hodgkin? You mean the defendant was. Anyone else? Who else? Besides yourself, Sergeant Hodgkin and the defendant. Did you talk to the defendant at this time? Yes. Did you talk about him needing help? Yes. But what did you say, Susan? I just told him that I couldn't help him because I was only a witness for the state, but to ask Sergeant Hodgkin that is what he was there for and maybe they could commit him or something. Did you ask him why he had done this? I asked him why. I even asked him, I said, in one of the phone conversations, he put his little niece on the phone. I asked him, I said, how would you feel if somebody did that to your niece and he didn't say anything? Did he tell you why he had done this to you? No. I asked him what, why he had been out of jail, what kind of trouble he had been in, and he said, armed robbery and chicks. Chicks? Chicks. Was there anything else said during this conversation? Is that about it? When he was going down the hall, he said, I tricked him. No further questions, Your Honor. Miss Miller, you had been visiting a friend of yours that evening? Yes. And this had been at an apartment? Yes. And that is the Gondo Apartments that is located on PCH out approaching 7th Street. On PCH? Yes. How long had you been at that apartment before you left and went to the parking lot? Ever since around 5.30? And this person who you were visiting there, is it true to say that he was your boyfriend? Yes. And was this any particular occasion when you were visiting him that particular day? He was leaving for Vietnam the next day. Were you having a party or anything of that sort there? No, I just cooked a dinner and were there other persons besides yourself and your boyfriend? No. Did you drive there by yourself? Yes. Parked your car in a parked lot that is located near the apartment house. It's in the apartment house. That is the parking lot belonging to those apartments, is that right? Yes. Is this a fairly large sized parking lot out there? Yes. Is it a after dark, is it lit? Yes. That evening were there quite a few cars parked in the parking lot? Yes. In order to go out to your car, did you come out the front entrance to the apartments? No. 
The middle gate, the car, was the first one right by the gate. And does this gate go into the entrance to the apartment? It goes into the middle of the apartments. Is that the middle in the front facing from PCH? It's the middle of the apartments. It's a circle apartment and walks into the middle. And what is the name of your friend, Bob Ricks? Did he leave for Vietnam the next day? Yes, he did. When you left that evening, is that the last time you saw him? No, I saw him the next day.